a it's forty eight sharks, and this is a special stream because I have the infinite hiccups, the hiccups that do not end, and they just kind of like happen. So <gasps> that's gonna be a thing, and some people like it, some people don't. I don't know. So, um, I mean, I don't know what else to say, or else to <laughs> continuously talk about. So I figure, hey, let's do another chapter of Dexter and go from there. And I promise you, I'm not fucking around with you. These are like genuine hiccups. And um, yeah, my sister, when she sneezes, she sneezes, she sneezes forever. And when I fucking hiccup, I hiccup forever. So here we go. Um, Darkly Dreaming Dexter, Chapter 8. Again, the hiccup version. So dis either re regard or disregard the hiccups. They're going to happen as I'm going. So fuck it. <laughs> Let's get on. Let's get on with it. In theory, Mentro's 72-hour meeting gives everyone enough time to get somewhere with a case. But it's soon enough that the leads are still warm. And so Monday morning, in a conference room on the second floor, the crack crime fighting to team led by the indomitable Detective LaGuardia assembled. And once again, for the 72 hour, I assembled with them. I got some looks and a few good hearted remarks from the cops who knew me. Just simple, cheerful wit like, hey, blood boy, where's your squeegee? Salt of the earth, these people. And soon my Deborah would be one of them. I felt proud and humble to be in the same room. <clears throat> Unfortunate. These feelings were not shared by all the present. The fuck you doing here? Grunted Sergeant Dokes. <laughs> he was a very large black man with an injured air of permanent hostility. He had a cold ferocity to him that would certainly come in handy for somebody with my hobby. <clears throat> hobby. It was a shame we couldn't be friends. But for some reason, he hated all lab techs. And for some additional reason, he had always meant especially De <coughs> Dexter. He always held the Metro Dade <coughs> record for the bench press. So he rated my political smile. I dropped in to listen. Sergeant, I told him. Got no fucking call to be here. <coughs> he said, the fuck out of here. He can stay, Sergeant, LaGuardia said. Dokes scowled at her. What the fuck for? I don't want to make anybody <coughs> unhappy, I said, edging towards the door without any real conviction. It's perfectly all right, LaGuardia said, with an actual smile for me. She turned to Dokes. He can stay, she repeated. <coughs> Give me the fuck crease, Dokes grumbled. I began to appreciate the man's finer qualities. Of course, I gave, <coughs> I gave him the fucking creeps, and the only real question was why he was the only one in the room filled with cops who had the insight to get the fucking creeps from my presence. Let's <coughs> get started, LaGuardia said, correcting her gently, leaving no room for that doubt that she was in char <coughs> charge. Doke slouched back in his chair with the last scowl at me. The first part of the meeting was a matter <coughs> of routine reports political maneuvers, all the little things that made us human. Those of, <coughs> of us are human, anyway. LaGuardia briefed the information officers on what they could do and what they <coughs> could not release. Things they could release included a new glossy photo of us. LaGuardia, she made it up, just specifically for the occasion. It was serious and yet glamorous, intense yet refi <coughs> refined. You could almost see her making lieutenant in that picture. If only Deborah had that kind of PR smarts. It took most of an hour before we get around to the actual murders, but finally LaGuardia asked me for the reports <coughs> on the progress in finding her mystery witness. Nobody had anything to report. I had tried hard to look su surprised. LaGuardia gave a group of gave the group a frown of command. Come on, people, she said. Somebody needs to find some something here. But nobody did, and there was a pause. While the group studied... <clears throat> mm. 
Then there was a pause while the group studied their fingernails, the floor, <clears throat> the floor, the acoustic tiles in the ceiling. Deborah cleared her throat. I, uh, she <clears throat> said, and cleared her throat again. I had a, a um, an a idea, a different idea about trying something in a slightly different, careful. Coaching couldn't make her sound more sound natural when she said it, but she really had at least stuck to my carefully worded politically correct phrasing. LaGuerta raised an artificially perfect eye eyebrow. An idea, really? She made a face to show how surprised and delight delight <laughs> delighted she was. Please, by all means, share it with us, Officer I I mean Officer Morgan. Doke snickered, a delightful man. Deborah flushed, but slogged on. The um, cell crystallization, <coughs> see, cell crystallization on the last victim. I'd like to check and see if any refer <coughs> refrigerated trucks have been reported stolen in the last week or so. Silence, utter dumb silence. The silence of the cows. They didn't get it. The brickheads, and Deborah was not making them see it. She let the silence grow. A silence LaGuerta milked with a petty frown. A puzzled glance around the room to see if anybody else was following this. Then a polite look at Deborah. Refrigerated trucks, LaGuerta said. <gasps> Deborah looked completely flustered, the poor child. And this was not a girl who enjoyed public speaking. That's right, she said. Deborah's face darkened. Not a good sign. LaGuardia let it hang, enjoying. Mm -hmm. she, <clears throat> she said as Deborah cleared her throat. And when that didn't do any good, I coughed, loud enough to remind her to st <clears throat> to stay cool. She looked at me. So did LaGuardia. Sorry, I said. I think I'm g getting a cold. Could anybody here really <clears throat> really ask for a better brother? The, um, cold, Deborah blurted, lunging at my lifeline. A refrigerated ve vehicle could probably cause that kind of tissue damage. And it's mobile, so it'd be much harder to catch. And getting rid of the body would be a, a lot easier. So, uh, if <clears throat> one was stolen, I mean, a truck, or a refrigerated, I mean, that might give us a lead. Well, that was most of it, and she did it. She did get it out there. One or two, two thoughtful frowns blossomed around the room. I could almost hear gears turning. But like <coughs> Guerta just nodded. That's very interesting. Uh, <coughs> officer, she said. She just put the smallest emphasis on the word officer. Just to remind us all that this was a democ <coughs> democracy where anybody could speak up, but really, but where I still believe that our best bet is to find the witness, we know he's out, <coughs> out there. She smiled. A politically shy smile. Or she, she said, <coughs> to make, sh uh, to show that she could be sharp. But somebody saw something. We know that from the evidence. So let's concentrate on that. And leave grasping at straws for the guys in Broward, okay? She pa <coughs> she paused, while waiting for a little chuckle to run around the room. But Officer Morgan, I appreciate I would appre <coughs> appreciate your continued help talking to the hookers. They know you down there. <coughs> My God, she was good. She had deflected anyone from possibly thinking about Deb's idea, put Deb in her, <coughs> her place, and brought the team back together behind her with the joke about our rivalry with Broward County. All in a few simple words, I, <coughs> I felt like applauding. Except, of course, that I was on Deborah's team, and she'd just been flattened. <coughs> her mouth opened for a moment, then closed. I watched her jaw muscles knot as she carefully pushed back her face into cop neutral. <coughs> it's in own, it's its own way, a fine performance. But truly, not even the same league as LaGuardia's. The rest of the meeting was uneventful. There was really nothing to talk about beyond what had been said. <coughs> beyond what had been said. So very shortly after LaGuardia's masterful put down, 
The meeting broke up, <gasps> broke up and we were in the hall again. Damn her, Deborah muttered under her breath. Damn, damn, damn her. Absolutely, absolutely, I agreed. She glared at me. Thanks, bro. Some help you were. I raised my, <clears throat> my eyebrows at her. But we agreed I would stay out of it so you would get the credit. She snarled. Some credit. She made me look like an idiot. With absolute respect, sister dear, you met her ha <clears throat> halfway. Deborah looked at me, looked away, threw up her hands with dis disgust. What was I supposed to say? I'm not even on the team. <laughs> team. I'm just there because the captain said they had to let me in. And he didn't say they had to listen to you, I said. And they don't, and they won't, De Deborah said bitterly. Instead of getting into homicide, this is going to kill my career, and I'll die as a meter mate, Dexter. There's a way out of this, Deb, I said. <laughs> I said. And the look she turned on me was now only about one-third hope. What? She said. <gasps> I smiled back at her, most comforting, challenging. I'm not really a shark smile. Fine with trumpet, <gasps> I said. It was three days before I heard <clears throat> from my dear foster sister again. A longish period for her to go without talking to me. She came into my office just after lunch on Thursday, look <clears throat> looking sour. I found it, she said. And I didn't know what she meant. Found what, Deb? I asked. The fountain of grumpiness. The truck, she said. The refrigerated fucking truck. But that's great news, I, I said. Why do you look like you're searching for somebody to slot? Because I am, she said. And flung four to five staple page, pages on my desk. Look at this. I picked up and glanced at the top page. Oh. I, I said. How many altogether have reported stolen the guys over on traffic say most of them turned up in canals torch from the insurance money nobody pushes too hard to find them so nobody's been pushing on these nobody's going to you know it's miami welcome to miami i said Dibber sighed and looked at the list back for me took the list took the list back for me slouching into my extra chair like she'd lost all her bones. There's no way I can check them all. Not by myself. It would take months. God damn it, Dex, she said. Now, what do we do? I shook my head. I'm sorry, Deb, I said. But now we have to, now we have to wait. That's it? Just wait? That's it? That's it, I said. And it was. For two more weeks, that's what it was. We waited. And then... And if you're not subscribing to me, go, please hit that subscribe button right now. And please share this on whatever social media platforms you have. I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers so I can start making income. And I can start putting that income back out towards other people. Um, this, this video was a hiccup video. Um, it's one of the unique ones that I make. You know, I'm, I've almost made 1,000 videos. So dig it, dig into my channel and see what you like. Comment below. Let me know what you want to see more of and what you would want to see less of. You know, um, I run polls every now and then. I should be running them more just to keep more in check in with you guys. Um, but yeah, uh, please, you know, definitely do that. But I mean, I, I already cannot ask any more of you because you've gotten to this point in the video, and I really appreciate you. And, uh, you know, all you can do is your best. And that's, what more can you do, man? We all rise together or else we all fall apart. It's up to us to teach the ne <clears throat> next generations on how to do this shit right. Because all the old heads that keep control are dying. And we <laughs> move forward. And we move forward together. This is why we need to describe everything that we're feeling and we need to collab and socialize, network, all that shit. We gotta wake people out of the matrix, man. We gotta wake people the fuck, the fuck up. You know, not woke, but we need to wake them up. Again, thanks for listening. To the hiccups.